Today's menu for entertaining is surprisingly easy to prepare. Simple but elegant gravlax starts off the meal, which also features duck with orange and mint and a sparkly pineapple and orange salsa. Stuffed tomatoes with spinach and yogurt cheese are a healthy and colorful addition to a menu simple enough for every day, but perfect for elegant entertaining. Dupree, and today we have a wonderful meal for you, some of my very favorite things. We're going to start with a pineapple and orange salsa. And salsa is a real fancy name now for all these um, fresh tasting side dishes that we have, that we add to our plate, kind of give our, our food a boost. And part of our great mission is to avoid the fats these days. So. We use salsas to kind of compensate and flavor for some of the fat flavor that we used to get from a lot of fat. First thing that we're going to do is to drain a can of crushed pineapple and put the juice into a saucepan. And you know I'm a real lazy bones. What I did was I drained the pineapple first. I used that juice, put it in there, and then I just add, drained the mandarin oranges in the same drainer. So anyway, I've got that. And then I'm going to add some brown sugar some orange juice, and arrowroot. Now, arrowroot is the root of the arrowroot plant, and it's a tropical um, thickener. If you didn't have arrowroot, you could use cornstarch, and if you didn't have cornstarch, you could use flour. Usually, I add my arrowroot to the cold liquid, which is called slaking it, and then add it in there. But you can, you can uh, do what you have to do. Use whatever thickener you've got. Um, because you just want to get this to the point where it's um, palatable. People use arrowroot because it has less uh, distinctive flavor than flour, for instance. Now you heat it for three to five minutes and it just begins to thicken. Then you add your crushed pineapple and your drained mandarin oranges and some sliced mint leaves. So let me show you this. Here's some mint leaves. I'm just taking them off here and giving them a little slice. And it would be even prettier, these got a little unhappy sitting under the lights, but it'd be even prettier if I left them more whole and actually kind of sliced them. Every mint um, leaf is different, obviously. So let's just do this. Here it is starting to thicken. I know you can't see it, but it really gave a drag right on the spoon as soon as I put it in. So let me go ahead and add these things. You just simmer them five to six minutes, remove them from the heat, and then you garnish it with whole mint leaves. And I have it all over here in my pretty side dish. Obviously, you can make this days ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator, or probably what I would do would be make this, start with my duck, and make that while my duck was cooking so that I maximize my time. And the next thing is duck with orange and mint. And this is one of those dishes that will go from summer to winter, uh, and it's good hot or cold. So it's particularly nice in fall and spring when your weather's unpredictable. Uh, you can wash the duck if you like and pat it dry. I don't always wash my fowl, it's really optional, but this comes usually sealed in a package, and um, sometimes some of the things that are inside of it will kind of roll over it, some of the juices, we'll call it juices. Now. Let's go ahead here, let's just check what's inside. And I know, I might as well say, blood, that's what it is, sorry. Um, you might as well check inside and see what's inside the package. And usually this comes in a little package and move it out. Now I know that she would never bring something like a duck straight home from the store and throw it um, into the freezer without going back first and emptying everything out of it. You wouldn't do that with a chicken either, would you? No. Uh, that's just the temptation of the devil because you can't get these defrosted unless you've got the, the cavity empty. You just can't get them defrosted in the same amount of time because those things bulk up the cavity. So that's the neck, um, the heart, um, 
gizzard right here, and this is the liver. There's that little heart again if you didn't see it. And that's the neck. And I would just brown those up and use them for stock. Now go back to your duck, prick it all over with the fork, not piercing the flesh. You just want to pierce the fat. And go through, and if you see any extra fat, pull it out. What I find is now that they have removed more of the fat um, when they're packaging these ducks, and so we don't get anywhere near the amount of fat from these ducks that we used to. But if you see any extraneous fat, pull it out. You can melt that down and uh, saute croutons in it. That's my special secret sin. I love duck fat that's... Uh, in which we sauteed bread. It's really good. Okay, peel your oranges. Go ahead and slice into your orange like this. Cut off either end and then go back and where did I, where did I do it? And just go around the orange all the way around. And then, rather than giving you wagon wheels, what we've done today is giving you wedges. So get all this off. The serrated knife is probably not as good for this um, as my nice little sharp knife. Let me just see how this is doing over here. I don't want this to burn. Let me turn it off. Okay, did you hear it? It's talking to me. Now go ahead now, be sure to get all of your white off, because that's bitter, and cut it into wedges. Here we go. And then rub the orange segments over the duck. So just, you're just trying to flavor this duck very nicely. And then put them and the mint sprigs in the cavity of the duck. really nice. And then here's some mint. Mint grows for me all year round. I hope it does for you too. And season it with salt and pepper. And that's one of those debatable things. Um, some people say you shouldn't season salt at first and others say you should. And it's really just optional to you. For you, um, I'm tending to think more and more now that it makes the skin crisper. But I haven't done a scientific survey. Now, we used to say trust something but now we've simplified the phrasing and simplified the process. And I'm just going to tell you right now just to tie the little legs together. That just makes a neater package. That's really it. If you don't have some nice kitchen twine, use the non-plastic kind of dental floss. I know that you would never think to use the plastic kind. Okay. Place the duck on a rack in a roasting pan. and. You know, this roasting pan is not as solid. If you just did have a quantity of duck, don't use something quite that flimsy. If you can, get it into something like this, only obviously didn't fit. Um, so, but try to get two of these then, because you want some structure. You don't want to take a chance at getting a bad burn when you remove it from the oven. So, so make it more stable if you can with two roasting pans. Put it in the oven and roast it for 450, at, at 450 degrees for 15 minutes. That just sears it and helps get your skin crisp. And then lower the temperature to 350 degrees. It cooks for about an hour to an hour and a half more. Then take it out of the oven and set it aside to cool. It should cool about 10 minutes, but really even more. And in fact, what I like doing is cooking my duck way ahead of time, maybe even several days ahead of time, and then um, reheating it. I, I don't live a last minute life anymore. And it's very frustrating to me to have to wait. Let's just say that if I tried to do this for company and uh, had an hour and a half before they came to put it in, that's just fine. But then I'd have to carve it when they were there. Uh, I do like the fact that you can just throw this in the oven and leave it once you've turned the temperature down. So you've got that 10 minutes while you're making your salsa. You turn the temperature down and you just leave it and then come back to it when you need it. But look, if you're serving people in your home, Duck is hard for people, and people are afraid of it because they don't know how to eat it.
So you want to make it as easy for them as possible. Many people have never had duck at home. Many people have never had duck, which is why I'm showing it to you. So what you do is you cut down either side of the backbone. Let me show you this first, just so you see how easy this is, to get this for your guests ahead of time. And I get mine all prepared, and then I run mine in the broiler. Now, the only hard part of this is right here, and that's this part of the leg. So just cut right on up very forcefully. I'm running out of time. So you'll do that. Then you cut the breast the same way. Then go back, get under here, and pull the breastbone out just like this. And then if you want to, you cut your... See that? Then people won't have to deal with that on the plate, which is so frustrating. So you pull out, the, pull out the breast and the rib bones. You can even pull out that backbone if you wanted to. Put it on your plate, and then when they cut it, you see, or when you cut it, if you, you serve either half a duck per person or else divide it into quarters and serve each person a quarter and then um, have an extra duck if you have four people for backup. And uh, then serve it with your salsa hot or at room temperature. If you want to reheat this, you run it under the broiler and get the skin real crisp. And that's what I would do right now because I wouldn't want it to be kind of pale like that. Natalie will be right back after this information. Hello, I'm at the South Harbor in Helsinki and a lot is going on. There's some construction, there's boats, and then a fabulous, fabulous market with an incredible array of fresh fruits, particularly the beautiful, beautiful berries for which Finland is known, and the lovely fish, the herring and the salmon. And now we're going to show you how to grab some lox. When you grab lox, or that is, put up salmon for the next day, as often as these gentlemen do, it's very easy. Here he's just filleting the fish, cutting it in half, and removing um, the head, which could be, of course, used to make a stock or a soup, and the bones. And he's simply boning it by keeping his knife flat on the bone and tearing right across the top. Now, he's not skinning the fish because he says, really, it's nicer the next day if you have the skin to kind of work against when you slice it. And you see he's slicing off all of the small fins, just tidying up the meat with that nice, sharp knife. Now, this fish was caught last night just outside of Helsinki, and so it's very fresh. It's a beautiful, beautiful salmon there. And you can see how he just slides the knife right against the bones. No trouble, just cuts it like it was butter. It only takes about 24 hours to grab the lox. And so uh, we'll just take this, mix a little salt and sugar and dill together in a mixture, and then wrap it up. Here's some nice brown paper, but at home you might want to use some plastic wrap or parchment paper would do. He salted the paper and then he has a mixture already prepared with the sugar. Uh -huh. He's just doing it right there. It's very lightly sugared as you can see and lightly salted with the rock salt. And then here's some fresh dill just in big hunks put on top of it. And now it's wrapped tightly. Of course, some of the moisture will be extruded, so you want to be sure that it's wrapped in something so that it doesn't spill all over. And wrap it up here. And leave it sealed until tomorrow at about the same time when you can slice it into lovely pieces. You always keep your gravlox uh, well refrigerated and after a day or so, you brush off the salt because much more than that, and you would soften the fish too much and, and uh, it wouldn't be as good. They really think it's the best 24 hours later. For nearly a century, Le Creuset's colorful French cookware has been a favorite in kitchens around the world. From its bold finishes and uncompromised quality, to its easy to clean materials, the brand's range of iconic products are as easy to use as they are to love.
Pavlox is a Scandinavian specialty, and this is my interpretation. When I was in Helsinki, I was just knocked out by how many different ways that they grow, or how many different fish that they groved. I mean, they did the trout, they did the salmon, and uh, it was such a simple procedure. I have it in one of my books with the southwestern spices on it, and uh, actually, I think I have it in two of my books because I just enjoy it so much, but it certainly is easy, and it made it even easier for me. I think in the back of my mind, I was always, I don't know, just kind of a, a little anxious about it, but when I saw how casual they were there and how many things they grabbed, uh, it, I just got over it, got over the concern about it. It's a great first course for a dinner party. It's great on crackers or toast. Um, it's great with sour cream and capers for a stand-up party. I mean, it's just, it's just a nice little hit. I've even sliced it and put it in salad the last minute. So it's, it's a nice thing to have on hand. The first thing that you want to do is to line a roasting pan with plastic wrap. And I've just used this big one. And I'm, I'm assuming you're going to have a bigger fish. I mean, I gave the specific size of the fish so that you'd have a bigger fish. But we cut ours in pieces, so we're sewing sections of it. But you... Uh, need a fish big enough to do it in. This is just a little puny piece there. Okay, the wrap should hang over the sides enough to enclose the salmon completely, and we're going to fold this up over it. Now, go ahead and sprinkle some salt, sugar, and black peppercorns, and I really don't have a, an objection to your um, grating peppercorns, but I think you may want to just see them pounded and... Um, so let me just do it over here for you. Just crush them there. Ten in one blow. Strong woman there. Go ahead and get this in here. And that's all <clears throat> personal preference for you, too, because other spices work as well. Then lay a salmon filet, but you could use trout, on top of the mixture, skin side up. You can remove the skin, but I find that it gives the salmon some support and makes it easier to slice later. later. And then cover the fish with some large sprigs of dill. Um, and once again, you can change your herb, too. Dill is just real traditional, and I think it's because it has a nice long growing season there. Then fold in the sides of the plastic wrap, and it just will enclose it completely. And then cover it, you know, uh, you're going to cover it kind of loosely with, put this pan on top, and refrigerate it for two days. Now turn the salmon every 12 hours, and it's going to have some juices in there, so you unwrap it and you baste it with those juices. And then you pull it out when you're finally done and you discard I should have just covered it kind of lightly on the underneath it I pretend I covered it and uh, you're going to throw away your dill and drain the fish and you see what's happened and you can even brush this off if you'd like what's happened is that um, here are the juices. I'm, I'm sure that's hard to see. I'm just going to pour them into here so you can get a sense of what I was talking about when I said to baste it with those juices. The juices, obviously, are the salt. It's like a salt solution, and that's why you want to baste it with it. It helps for the preservation of it. Now, you drain it, and then you can rewrap it until you're ready to serve. You don't want to keep it in that salt too long. Um, because you, the salt is extruding all the moisture of it, and it, you don't want to have it be too salty. Uh, it'll keep several days in the refrigerator once you've rewrapped it. But a lot of people tend to think that things like this are cured indefinitely, and they're not. Um, just like smoking, you just can't just leave it indefinitely. Now, slice it thinly to serve it. Let me just see. Get a good sharp knife. First part of it might be a little tough, but then you just go back, slice it on the diagonal. It's a little easier. Get a nice knife like this. Slice, see how thin you can slice it. Takes a little bit of practice. Oh, it is so good. Now, in this big pan, you could have a whole salmon side this way, but you'd have to increase your uh, amount of seasonings. And there it is. It's very pretty. And let me show you the very pretty salmon that's here. Isn't it lovely? Tuck it under there. Oh, it's so good. Now, 
stuffed tomatoes with spinach and yogurt cheese. And this will serve four people very easily, very nicely. Uh, and you can make the tomatoes ahead of time or you can make the filling ahead of time and then just heat them up before serving. Just do as you wish. First thing that you want to do is chop your green onions. Cut off the ends here. Make sure that's nice and clean. An easy way to chop it is to cut it in, in half, which I didn't do. Put the flat side down away from you. Might be better if I gave myself some room. And cut into the onion like this and then down. I usually leave the root on to hold it together and I just did it the opposite way and now you know why I leave the root on. I'll show you this right here where the root is on. It's a little easier. Cut it in half like this and then down. And it's easy. Now peel and chop your garlic. Just give it a swack and let's chop it. And sometimes you can almost mash it all together uh, and then not have to chop it at all. Go in and chop it. Cut off that little bad spot. Who wants that? And chop it. Okay. Now, chop your fresh herbs, basil, oregano, and thyme, whatever you have. Something just to make it taste good. And if you only have dried ones, then chop some parsley with your dried ones and add that. Thaw some frozen spinach. Drain it to get rid of the moisture, and then cut the flower end off of all your tomatoes, leaving the stem intact. It's a choice whether or not you want to cut off this, this end or the other end, but this seems to sit, sit a little easier, so that's why I leave it on. Set aside the cap and hollow out the tomato. Um, I'll just show you this. This is where the, fl the flower end. Do this. You hollow out your tomato and uh, discard the pulp. Lots of times I'll squeeze that spinach with my hand, but putting it between two plates seems to be a good way. And you know, frozen spinach is already cooked. Obviously, you could use fresh spinach and cook it if you wanted to. All right, do that. Put it on a plate. Leave it to drain. And meanwhile, heat your butter. Cook your onions and garlic until they're soft and saute them. And then add flour, some parmesan, parmigiano-reggiano preferably to make it taste good breadcrumbs, and the chopped herbs. And go through this here. My mother was always a good duck cooker. I remember that from when I was a child. And uh, I remember her serving duck a lot as a child, and I enjoy it. I like, it's not just fancy food, but it does do that. Now, now you add your drained spinach, and then some yogurt cheese, which is yogurt that I have put in a strainer or cheesecloth and drained. Do that here, and I'm just doing that in place of whipping cream. I figured we had a fair amount of fat in this with the duck, and that the yogurt would add it, would sort of a cooling part to it. Then take your mixture and add a little cayenne pepper if you want to, and a little nutmeg. I'm going to show you this nutmeg very quickly. I'm going to fill this and I want to come back and spend the rest of the time talking to you about nutmeg. Put this inside here, into your mixture, into your tomatoes, and then top it with additional Parmesan cheese, just like that. You can put your little lid back on if you want to. Put it in an oven-proof serving dish and bake it 350 degrees until it's heated through about 10 minutes. And then put the little hat on top of it. That hat can't bake the whole time because it's smaller and it gets softer, but it, about five minutes more. Now, I wanted just to show you this nutmeg. This came from Jamaica, where I got married. Uh, very kind, anything Jamaican. And you could use whole onions rather than the tomatoes for this. But this is nutmeg. This is the outer casing of the nutmeg, and I just smashed this. I got overzealous with that pot just before you came on the air, but there's the nutmeg. If you want to see what's inside, there it is. And this is mace, which goes on the outside of the outer casing over the nutmeg. And then just freshly grate your nutmeg. Freshly grated nutmeg makes an enormous difference. Natalie's menu for entertaining is surprisingly easy to prepare. Simple but elegant Gravlax started off the meal, which featured duck with orange and mint, and a sparkly pineapple and orange salsa. Stuffed tomatoes with spinach and yogurt cheese are a healthy and colorful addition to a menu simple enough for every day, but perfect for elegant entertaining.